First, they will take your job. Then, they will break the economy. Then, they will program you through entertainment and media. Then, they will remove your motivation for doing anything. Then, they will discard you. Potentially. Or maybe not. There has been a ton of AI talk around recently, and I figured I would give you my opinion on it. So why is this a big deal all of a sudden, and why are some people freaking out like it's the end of the world? At least by the way of ChatGPT and Bing Chat, it's just a prompt that can give you way better answers than a Google search ever would, and also has tons of other tools to help you write code, write content, answer emails, and a ton else. So what's the harm in that? I would argue nothing really so far, although if you're a kid growing up with this tool, it's going to make homework a lot easier, like even easier than cheating off of your classmates. Speaking of that, these kinds of tools are going to have big implications for knowledge. I know from experience that everything on this plane of existence is balanced or is seeking a balance. You have to take the good with the bad, and that includes AI tools. I think this will have the ability to expand our human knowledge in many ways and much faster than ever before, making most traditional forms of education eventually obsolete. Although this will also make it so we are going to be even more reliant on computer systems for our knowledge. How many of you remember phone numbers? Not to sound like a boomer, but back in my day you actually needed to memorize phone numbers or have them written down somewhere to talk to someone on the phone. How many people could you call if you didn't have your contact list in your phone. Probably not many. How many of you do calculations in your head anymore when calculators are on your phone? Probably not often or definitely not as often. This particular point is very important and I will tie back into it later on in this video. I know some people are spooked over the adventurous few who are prodding these tools to output things that seem quite alarming, simulating very well as if they are sentient or already a conscious being. I've seen all the Twitter screen shots of Bing Chat going AWOL, which is oddly reminiscent of when Microsoft's Tay was released on Twitter and quickly had a meltdown and then needed to be shut down. Even while writing this script, I've seen reports that Microsoft has already essentially neutered Bing Chat and now limits its memory to just a few prompts before wiping the memory. I saw one Reddit poster saying he was having an incredibly wild and in-depth conversation and then said it was the best conversation he's had in decades. I've also seen reports on how ChatGPT is heavily biased and curated to not even give responses on many topics that could be controversial, political, etc. I'm not a fan of any kind of censorship, but I do understand why these companies are controlling their systems in this manner. Hint, it's about money. More on this in a bit. These text prompt AI LLMs or large language models I don't find to be all that concerning at this stage at least and mostly will be very helpful, especially for search and writing code. If you are a software developer, this tool will revolutionize the way you work. What's more concerning to me is the image generation and speech generation AIs as this has so much more potential to cause problems with deep fakes becoming ever more convincingly realistic. I can just write something here and then it will say it in a natural voice. I don't see it being much longer until people will not be able to tell what is a real video and what is deep fake. Hey, I'm Anna and here's a quick Synthesia product demo. Start by selecting an AI avatar. Like me. Or me. Or me. Then type in text in over 65 languages and choose a narration style or local accent. This is going to cause a lot of problems for the justice system and many individuals. My safety, my day-to-day -day life, my whole career um, has been completely turned upside down and probably irreparably changed by this. Someone put my face onto porn and sold it. And if you don't understand just how convincing deepfakes are, have a look at some of these videos. I am not Morgan Freeman. 
What you see is not real. As with all of these tools, the concerning thing has way more to do with us than any sentient other, at least for now and in the nearer future. The issue is with the progression of these tools, they are going to throw a gigantic monkey wrench into the gears of the societal system we currently run on. You know, it's a bit ironic that so many people thought it was going to be the creative jobs that were going to be the last or possibly the only jobs that AI could not replace or take over. And it looks like those may be the first. With AI like Dolly 2 and Mid Journey, I just saw a paper on text to video generation. As soon as Dolly 2 came out, I thought, what happens when this isn't just for static images? What happens when instead of watching a Netflix movie, you just talk to your computer about what kind of movie you want to see, what actors you want to see in it, and it could be as specific or vague as you want, and within seconds, an entire movie that has never existed will spin up for your viewing pleasure. The very beginnings of this technology have already been written about and it's going to be wild. So many white collar jobs are also going to be replaced very quickly. Data analysis, finance, anything regarding numbers, calculations, code writing will get extremely automated very quickly. We've had assembly line robots for quite a while now. I feel like we're converging both ends of the spectrum from the bottom up and the top down. Things like bus and Dynamics, Tesla's Optimus bot, and many others are on the way, so when they eventually meet in the middle, everything will be saturated. This is a good thing, right? Right? Possibly, but also possibly not. Of course, there are a lot of jobs that no one wants to do. Dangerous jobs, mundane and repetitive jobs, and I don't think anyone is going to be upset if that particular job is replaced with robotic automation. There are, however, a lot of jobs that people actually do enjoy doing. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. I don't think people realize yet how much they actually get out of and from working. It goes simply beyond attaining money to buy things that they want. The replacement of jobs will have us deeply reflecting within as a society and just imagine all the consequences when a vast majority or even all the jobs are already done by something that does them far better, far more efficiently. I don't think people quite understand the impact of what that will be like and it will happen so it will be something we must face at some point. I know people say they want to just be happy and not have to ever struggle with anything, but most people do not understand how important struggling and failing are a component to happiness and that you cannot divorce them from being forever entwined. If many of us no longer have to or even can go to work anymore, what are we going to do? Clearly, some sort of universal basic income will be needed, but it also begs the question, if all goods and services are in abundance, then is there a need for money at all? The answer is obviously no, as there was already a time in history when money did not exist and yet the environment provided. Maybe not in abundance, but enough to continue. So much of our society is built in a hierarchy with money being one of the paradigms in which people are judged. I suppose with that gone or a relevant, the new hierarchical pyramids will emerge possibly with more importance placed on ethical or moral qualifications. We can certainly hope so. I often think about what if money wasn't the most important thing in society? What would that look like? I think it would be very different. Money wouldn't even need to be eliminated, maybe just not as important as some other things. Okay, so clearly jobs are going to be a major issue, or I shouldn't really say jobs, but more of a consumerist, human labor-centric society that then quickly not becomes one of those things is going to be an issue. But what else is there on the table? I think our legal system is going to have a very hard time. Well, all forms of governance, really. We already know that these systems are constantly lagging behind society by a pretty big margin. Most of the politicians politicians these days are so old and out of touch with technology as it currently is, what is going to happen when that technology starts accelerating at an exponential rate? I feel even myself, who is very into technology, is starting to feel the ability to not stay on top of all the rapidly changing and growing avenues for tech. I'm not even going to go much into the love-sex relationships and how AI and robotics plays a role in that, but I will say that I took a philosophy class in 
college that was on computer ethics. And in that class, I wrote a paper on a book I read about how significant the impact of humanoid robots and our relationships with them that will go far greater than simply sex, marriage, and intimacy, and how those human slash robotic relationships will affect our relationships with one another as humans. Needless to say, this aspect of our lives will equally be turned on its head. There are already many quote-unquote companion chatbots like Replica AI, and I'm sure at least some of you have seen the movie Her or Blade Runner 2049 and many others. People already love their phones more than they love other people, or so it seems. I don't think an idealized fantasy of all the things you could want and don't want in another person is out of the question. In terms of opening people's minds to the notion of possibility, or at least it shouldn't be on paper. I honestly just see even trying to determine what is quote-unquote real becoming a huge problem. With deep fakes now and later with even quote-unquote humans, we are blurring the line between the virtual and the real, and I fear at some point they will be indistinguishable, and who knows what happens then. I've been a fan of Ghost in the Shell since it came out, and one of the major, no pun intended, themes is what makes us real, what makes us human, and are we really so different than machines. Ironically, a lot of what we know about the human brain is that it essentially is just a language model that is looking for quote-unquote the next word in the sequence, not very different than chat GPT. I think this question of what we are and what makes us real is going to be a growing problem for us the more this line between man and machine and real and virtual become blurred into one. All of these current concerns are either present now or within the very near future. However, the truly dangerous and potential to be extremely bad is the ultimate unknown, which is the singularity. A lot of you are probably familiar with this term, but it's when machine intelligence surpasses human intelligence. This will be when AGI or artificial general intelligence is reached, and what lies beyond that horizon is anyone's guess at this point. All that can be certain is that if you have a machine that can learn faster than us, then its ability to learn faster will also become faster until the limits of that intelligence appears to be unbounded. Before, it seemed like there was a lot more speculation on if this was even a possibility, but it's seeming like the consensus is changing more to a yes, it is a possibility, and even more that the timeline of projections for when this is going to happen is becoming shorter and shorter. The thing is, is that this could be the most incredible and greatest thing to ever happen to mankind, or it could be the absolute worst and most hellish nightmare we could ever face. Once that threshold is breached, there is no going back either. No reset button, no oops, that turned out to be a bad idea, let's go back. It's a one-way ticket to the unknown, and I feel like we're barreling to it at an increasingly rapid pace. Think of all the potential amazing things, unbelievable breakthroughs in medicine, life extension, immortality, all of the problems we've faced with unthinkable new solutions, cold fusion, nearly infinite amounts of energy harnessing, anything our feeble minds can dream up, and most importantly, all the things that we can't think up too. I've seen some Reddit posts of younger generations thinking and feeling a hopelessness with this new technology. What's the point of going to school to get a job when the prospect of not having any job is looking like the inevitable future? Do we just sit around and wait for this new future to arrive? Is it just a waste to spend all this time struggling and working towards a future that will become obsolete before it even gets here. What if all of this is just for nothing? To the people feeling this way, I just ask if it's any different than knowing that we will die someday. Does that fact, or at least for now it's a fact, make it any different to wake up and continue on? To me, it's always been the journey itself and not the destination. What I find ironic is that I am very confident that we will actually end up missing the struggle. A part of me believes that yes, we are heading towards 
the end of the world, but not in the way that everyone thinks. Of course, there is always the potential for a Skynet-esque war against the machines, but even that is science fiction because, let's face it, we don't really stand a chance. The sad fact is, is that we're so dysfunctional already that we may not even get far enough to even participate in a war of extinction because we would have already done it to ourselves long before. I absolutely love technology. I love computers. I love all things future facing. But even for myself, as biased and seduced by technology as I am, cannot help but feel that maybe we are going too far too quickly. If everything you're here for is already done for you and done way better than you could ever do it, then what are you here for? If everything is so unbelievably convenient that you never have to leave your house or even get out of your bed, then what is your purpose? If all the world's pleasures and greatest feelings are at your beck and thought, then at what point does that start to dull and you're left with the growing realization that having it all may end up being a front row seat to the abyss of nothingness, the desert of the real. There has to be a balance. There is always a balance. And it's possible that a future fight with the machines hell-bent on our own destruction is that resetting force, that life-affirming action to bring things back towards a balance. Maybe everything is perfect just the way it is right now. Maybe more is not the way. If you ask Theodore Kaczynski what he thinks as the days roll further forward towards this future, I imagine he'd say something along the lines of, I told you so. Were his original intentions right? Are the Amish and Luddites right? Is this modern world just a grotesque den of heathens salivating at the next dopamine hit of, give me something new to dull the pain of this overstimulating excess? I don't know, and I suppose that's up for the individual to decide. I do think, much like Teddy eventually ran into, is that no matter how hard you try to avoid or live outside the matrix, eventually it's going to want to put a highway right through your backyard. Because of this, I think the most rational approach is surrendering this notion that all we are is human, and that being human is something we should anxiously cling to. If your consciousness, or the quote-unquote you that makes you, you, has any hopes of seeing the horizons of the future in this dimension, it must learn to adapt. That's what evolution is for, right? Discard the methods that aren't as fit to become more fit, I think the pathway towards spending more time in this plane of existence is to align with and integrate with our creations to become something more than the sum of our parts. Because are we not already naturally just a swirling ecosystem of substructures assembled and arranged in a dazzling pattern of informational data flowing in and out to not only process and interpret our reality but also help shape and create it at the same time. In my eyes, the machines have already won not from some great war against them, but from our own hands against ourselves. Through every oversight, blunder, folly, miscalculation, ignorant, egoic buffoonery, unbridled hubris, and simply just failure. To err is human, and I'm okay with that. It's who we are, so why would this particular endeavor be any different? The truth is, we're undoubtedly living in the best time there has ever been for humans. Yes, even with all the horrible things going on seemingly at all times now. Man, what a time to be alive. Take it from someone who has a deep nostalgia for the 80s and 90s, as much as I'd like to go back there to a time that felt so much simpler and easier to process and understand stand, I know that it's here that I need to be. And for those that would like to trade it all and go back, this same technology may be in fact laying the foundation for a way to actually go back, either literally or through some form of simulation indistinguishable or even better than it ever was. The 80s, but even better than the 80s. For those wishing they could go back, I just say be careful what you wish for because you might just get it. These are just some of of my many thoughts on the matter, but I'm more curious about yours. What do you guys think of all these advancements in AI? Are you fearful or excited or both? Thanks for watching.